Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. So Josh, we've had six weeks to get you ready. Yeah, we've put you through cardio, core, muscle confusion, all to get you in shape. Ugh. Well, it's working. Ugh. And instead, you've binged on White Claw, ice cream, and a bacon bar. I- I'm not going to lie. Bacon bar was cool. Can't forget donuts. Oh, God, yeah, the donuts. Oh, God, those were so good. So many donuts. We should go get some more of those donuts. Yeah. But I did not realize that's what you guys were trying to do. Well, I hope it was worth it, because now it's the big day. Yeah, it is. All right. Wait, for what? For the big fight. Push <laughs> Uh oh. Reporting from the Michael Albert Ray Boxing Hall and Buffet, it's your source for all things sports. Sports News Today! We're coming to you live via satellite at the weigh in for the 2021 Boxing Championship that they're calling the Big Hit in the Fire Pit. We now turn to our correspondents, Danielle and Matt, for an update. Representing the Fire Pit Podcast, we have Josh, here to compete for the lightweight championship of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Matt, the Millennium Man Beard. And I'm Danielle, the Starling Clarice. The Fire Pit Podcast were the runners-up for this year's intramural podcast sports-type tournament and just paid a lot of money for this title shot. Brought to you by White Claw. We did what now? Nothing. Nothing. Pay attention. But here comes the champion. On my right, wearing gray, white, and blue, undefeated in 46 fights, the undisputed champion, Atlas, the Skyholder Motto. Look at those abs. Atlas is stepping on the scale. 174 pounds. Those arms, that chin. Can anyone ever come close to matching that level of perfection? All right, Josh, your turn on the scales. <laughs> Get on up there, stud. <laughs> How you doing? Josh, raucous like Bacchus, Reginald approaches the scales. <sighs> Good lord, it's so much wider. So many stairs. Dude, it was like five steps. Shut it. Josh being helped onto the scales. 224 pounds. Oh, nice. I'm down a few pounds. <laughs> well, this is an unexpected turn of... Actually, no, this is a completely expected turn of events. I don't think we've ever had anyone not make weight. If they don't fight, a lot of people are going to be out of a lot of money. There appears to be some argument on the stage. They're motioning Tom to the scale now. You're going to have to wait, do this. Wait, I mean, wait, wait. Like, so much no, money. Like, no, just wait. all the money. Like, no, um, no, it, no. Our, uh-uh, our no, no. Used, no. I told wrong. you once, name, I am no, not we, fighting we, in another no, tournament. We used, no. We used your credit no, card. No, and no it's I don't just, care how many Tom, credit cards we use. Tom. I don't care how many refunds we have to give. This is supposed to be Josh's turn for punishment this time. I'm putting my foot down. Absolutely not. I am not getting in that ring. Hmm. KO, Atlas wins. Tom goes down in one hit. No, that was two hits. Tom got hit. Tom hit the ground. Booyah. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there that one, didn't you there, Mr. Bacon Bar? Is his jaw supposed to look like that? I'm going to go with yes. Well... Fight's over in a record two seconds. What now? Yeah, Yeah, let's let's watch watch the movie, movie, guys. guys. Hang in there, kid. You're almost there, so I don't want to see you give up yet. I know Xander Berkeley and Heat is looking scary, but I want to see you tear right through him on your way to Robert De Niro in The Untouchables. I want to see you get mean against Charles Martin Smith in Starman. Otherwise, you'll never make it past Jeff Bridges in The Last Picture Show. But if you got the guts to take on Sybil Shepherd in Taxi Driver, then I know you got the heart to go one-on-one with Joe Spinell in Rocky. Now get in there! 
Step into the squared circle every Tuesday at FirePitPodcast.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh start on their marathon to Pound Town. Taking on all the heavy hitters, going the distance against the heavyweight champion of boxing films, Rocky. Rocky. It's hope. It's heartbreak. It's haymakers. And it's here here at the Fire Pit. You're a wrecking machine. Pause real quick. Do we want to do boxer names for this one? Oh my god! I was Let's stick ask. with the British names. Just stick okay. with the British names. I just I don't know why I bothered to write this anymore. I was just asking. All right, fine. Starting over. You stop you're ruining st- my vision. You're establishing <laughs> the other two people that you know that have British names. So All stick right. with the British names. Uh, oh my god! It's like there are three Joshes now. Oh Lord! Well, here let me uh, let me help you out there, Tom. Um, Dan, I do notice that Tom's got a nice chunk of a paragraph, and then it gets a little thinner with you. And I could tell that you're like, I need to get out of here. It's my end of work day when you get down to my paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Boston listeners, and Run welcome back to the Fire Pit. As much I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're already off to a great start, if you hadn't heard. We haven't even gotten to the movie yet. <laughs> I've had a long week, and Josh has just added another 72 hours to it. <laughs> I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and welcome one and all to the culmination of yet another journey. The final stop on our marathon to Pound Town. We've gone toe-to-toe with bank robbers, bootleggers, aliens, small Texas towns, Demented cabbies, and now we're going the distance. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them onto this one. But before Dan tells us about what we're watching and who we're watching, I'd like to introduce tonight's guests, our esteemed friends of the program and the power couple of common sense. Seriously, they stop us from doing all kinds of dumb shit. Danielle, British name Clarice. And her mm, bit of man meat over there. <laughs> Husband, Matt, British name, Philip. They helped us out on the skit, so we thought we'd invite them to watch tonight's film as well. Danielle, Matt, or should I say Clarice, or Philip, welcome. <laughs> Acting, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for having us on the show, you guys. You're a wonderful group of people. Seriously, stop doing the stupid shit, though. For God's sakes, there's only so many times I can bail you out of jail. Tom Tom has to chew scenery. It's like leather to him. He just goes and goes and doesn't stop until it's soggy and on the floor. Oh, we're 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 well aware. We're well aware. (laughs) (laughs) But carry on, then. So tell us about yourselves, guys. Let the people at home know who you are. Really. So uh, I'm Danielle, my husband, Matt, and I um, went to high school with Dan and and Tom and somehow feel like we went to high school with Josh, even though we haven't known him as long. Uh, (laughs) Is that about an accurate statement there? (laughs) We also forget that Josh did not go to high school with us. (laughs) I forget I didn't go to high school with you guys. So he's been around for so long. Well, we, it's actually, we did use the time elevator to retcon uh, the timetable. Oh, right. We got, remember, we got you out of Texas and then put you in Kansas and realized that was an even worse decision. So we took you to Kansas and then took you to Ohio. Oh, so that's, that's right. who we replaced Gino with. Okay, I'm glad with that. <laughs> Hi, Gino. Gino. Hi, Gino. Hi, Gino. Hi, Gino. <laughs> Hi, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to add, hon? Please, for the love of God, let me out of this closet. <laughs> I'm so tired. The rats are gnawing on my legs. No, <laughs> you will finish the podcast. Then you get 10 oh, minutes out of the closet. So, so hungry. <laughs> oh, God, finish God. your introduction, and I will slide a piece of moldy bread under the, under the door. Yes, Gross. yes, I'm fine. My name's Matt, and I love these people. They're my bestest friends. Now tell him you fell down some stairs. I fell down some stairs. <laughs> now, now say the line like sounding like you're not having a gun held to your head while you're saying that line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so 
like, hi, my name's Matt, and I am bestest friends with a lot of these guys. If we were a video fun. podcast, Matt would be blinking Morse code in <laughs> SOS. There'd be eyeliner on my on my eyelids. Yeah. This is please send help. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. It wouldn't say send help. It would say send nudes. <laughs> That's what you wrote with the only eyeliner he had left. It's like, got to play the cards right, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm needed. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Flash forward a week later where Josh is yelling at me for making this a three hour long episode. <laughs> so yeah, we're longtime listeners of the podcast. And this is our second time helping out. Yes, and refresh our memory, where did you first help us out? Uh the Ghostbusters two skit. Yes. Yeah, so, back at the beginning of season two. So Yeah. It was fun times, oh. I'll tell you. Are we actually bookending? We have them on at the beginning, and we now have one more journey left there, Tom. Oh, yeah, we still have one journey left. Math uh, is hard, guys. We were close, Obviously. but I'll accept it. But that was episode fifty. Was the last time they were on, so thirty-four episodes ago. Josh with the math numbers. Yeah, they they helped us out in that pinch. Danielle was played the lawyer. Matt was the judge. The explosions. Uh, Sean Connery. It was good times. <laughs> It was a fun time. I appreciate whenever you guys decide to drag us in here and do stuff. It's a very entertaining weekend. It's good to have you on. I'm glad we could uh, not only you know make time to guy you know get you guys here, but you're on at a destination too. Excellent. Yes. So now that we've heard from our guests, I think it's time to turn things over to. Unless no, no, Daniel and Matt, you're the guests. Why don't you turn it over to Dan next? Have the honor. <laughs> Well, Dan, if you'd like to carry on the rest of this conversation for us, it'd be great. Thank you. I didn't know I needed permission, but that's great. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if Dan's laughing or crying right now. (laughs) It's a combination of both. Dan, could you you let us know what the connections are with this particular journey? Um, We watched a movie last week, and we're going to take an actor from that movie and move him to this one. Awesome. (laughs) No. Very, very specific, Dan. Very, very specific. Uh, yes. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And as mentioned, last week we watched Robert De Niro pine away for Sybil Shepherd. Why? In 1975's Taxi Driver. And tonight we're going to follow Joe Spinelli, or Spinell, or <clears throat> he's not listening. It doesn't matter. From that film to our destination film night tonight, 1976's Rocky. Sylvester Stallone star making tour de force and arguably one of the best sports films of all time. But maybe we're getting a little ahead of ourselves to give us some rundown and to try to find box office numbers before 1984. I'll send things over to Josh. Thank you, Dan. Um, And this is this is going to be very fun, short (laughs) segment. Um, I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And uh, as explained before, we are we are, in fact, watching the one, the only the Rocky, the movie, not the mountains. Tonight, starring Sylvester Stallone, Talia Shire, Burt Young, Burgess Meredith, and one Carl Weathers. This is the movie that puts Stallone on the map. It made him a star, and it launched the Rocky franchise that is still going to this day. We are several movies deep, and there's still no end in sight. So, Rocky, released on December 3rd, 1976, has a running time of 119 minutes on a budget of $960,000. That's about equivalent of $4.37 million in today's money. It had a box office return of $225 million, which in today's money, adjusted for inflation, is $1.02 billion. Oh, sweet googly moogly. Yeah, we're talking like Marvel numbers there. So, but, you know, the box office for Rocky is crazy because it pulled in $225 million. But if you listen to any of our... Uh, previous episodes on movies released before 1980, you know that the box office numbers are so easy to get a hold of. They're so, so accurate and so uh, not painful to find. Fortunately, um, I know uh, how to get them. Google. But uh, yeah, Rocky pulled in uh, $225 million. So out of the Rocky franchise, there's nine movies that goes from this movie all the way up to Creed 2, which was released in 2018. So 
Do you guys care to take a guess on what is the highest grossing Rocky movie? Highest well, grossing? I th- think it's three. I mean, one point something something billion. No, no, that's most I, profitable, not highest grossing. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. I, I'd have to agree with. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it was the second one. I'm gonna say number two. I'm thinking Cold War, Rocky Four. Matt, do you have a guess? Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Russian. I must. Put you it in uh, guys are correct. Rocky Four is the highest grossing of the Rocky nice. films. Uh, and, that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was peak Stallone. Um, I have thoughts on that one. <laughs> we all do. We all well, do. Well, no, I have thoughts on the aftermath of that one. But yeah, go on. Oh, uh, I think yeah, because that one leads into Rocky Five. But yeah, Rocky Four is the highest grossing of the Rocky series. Rocky is actually only the third highest grossing of the Rocky series, which is uh, crazy to think. It outgrossed Creed and Creed Two, but. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and it was, uh, as we remember last week, Rocky was the highest grossing film of 1976. So I'm not going to go back over the top grossing films in 1976. Listen to last week's episode to get that. I mean, it definitely outgrossed Taxi Driver, which was at number 15. But I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. I'm going to keep my segment fairly short because numbers are incredibly sketchy prior to this because Rocky pulled in $225 million, but those numbers aren't 100% reported anywhere really until like 1977 when star wars was released for big ticket movies that was when their numbers was more accurate because movie studios wanted to get those information in they wanted them to be accurate but smaller movies prior to that not every single theater reported that information but around 1982 83 um computing got to the point where it made it a lot easier to calculate those and send in the information which allowed for a lot more accurate numbers so that's why we're able to see what each movie grossed each weekend as it was released because you can't even get weekend based updates on movies in the 70s so it makes it really difficult for me on my segment when we have older movies but you know we enjoy watching older movies on this podcast do you josh uh, that's all i've do you really as long as they're not (laughs) westerns He's, he's starting to get there. Hey, I liked the last picture show, and that was not only made in the 70s, but it was in black and white. Come on, give me a little credit, Daniel. We will convert you yet. <laughs> Never. But to listen to the production of this movie, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Tom. Well, thank you, Josh. Production. production. Action. Rocky. Tagline. His whole life was a million to one shot. Summary, a small-time boxer gets a supremely rare chance to fight a heavyweight champion in a bout in which he strives to go the distance for his self-respect. Generally, um, there's a lot of trivia on this film, so I won't go too far into the weeds here. Otherwise, I might uh, you know, step on Dan's toes and steal some of his thunder. And there is a lot of thunder to go around here. But this is an original film written by Stallone after watching a championship match um, between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wepner. Um, this is not in any way based on the real-life boxer Rocky Marciano, Though there might have been some loose inspiration here and there. This film is produced by Robert Chartoff and Irvin Winkler, two returning producers. Um, they're crime and drama sorts of producers with a knack for picking some hits. We saw one of those hits on this podcast, The Right Stuff. Uh, they've also produced all of the Rocky films, Ender's Game, and Irvin himself has produced Goodfellas. And directing this film is one John G. Avildsen. He was an interesting choice, to say the least. Uh, he, looking at his past credentials of underground, low-budget, exploitation, pseudo, maybe porn? I'm not sure. Looking at some of his very early credentials. Um, films like Joe and Guess What We Learned in School Today. He definitely had a talent for capturing grim and gritty kind of stuff, but considering almost all of his films before Rocky were about five-star averages, I'm betting he was tapped because he came cheap. But he did, or excuse me, he would go on to direct better and just as memorable films later on, um, one being a particular 80s decade classic, Karate Kid. So going from Rocky to Karate Kid, not bad. 
but also not bad. Written by and starring in this film, one Sylvester Sly Stallone, the titular Rocky. A uh, returning face to this podcast, uh, Josh and Dan, I, I believe uh, he his film was one of our favorite films for the previous journey. What was the name of that film again? Um, Greatest 80s film of all time? Yes. Mythics. <laughs> Mythics was made in the 70s. What? Yes. <laughs> no, no. Tango and Cash. Yes, Tango and Cash. Nighthawks. <laughs> Nighthawks. That's right. He was in Tango and Cash. That's, he was also in yes. Tango and Cash. I don't know if Tom's being serious or not. <laughs> and you never will. But no, yeah, he was in Nighthawks, which was a, a film we watched. And he was in Tango and Catch, which was a film we actually enjoyed. But we've already discussed him in those films, his, at least his acting credentials. He's actually had a few writing credentials. Uh, before writing Rocky, he wrote an episode of the series The Evil Touch which is a 1970s sci-fi horror series starring Darren McGavin. And since then, he's written Fist, Cobra, The Expendables movies, and all of the Rambo series. So not bad for a guy who basically was just the guy they hired to look like a thug in most movies. But in front of the camera... Along with Sylvester Stallone, we've got not really an ensemble cast, but a strong cast of supporting characters. Talia Shire, Carl Weathers, and Burgess Meredith. Talia Shire plays Adrian, sister of Francis Ford Coppola and member of the Coppola acting talented family. A performance actress, mostly dramas. She started off playing Connie in the Godfather trilogy. Uh, she's mostly known for lesser known films nowadays, such as Dreamland and Con Man. And my personal favorite film, I Heart Huckabees, which stars her son, Jason Schwartzman. I did not know that Talia Shire was Jason Schwartzman's mom. So today I learned. Also in this film, Carl Weathers playing Apollo Creed, also a performance actor. Before Rocky, he was mostly known for black exploitation films like Bucktown. After Rocky, oh boy, did his career take off. We saw him in films such as Semi-Tough, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Arrested Development, the TV show, and the voice of Combat Carl in Toy Story 4. Yeah, he's also very famous because he's in the meme with him and Arnold Schwarzenegger with the handshake high five thing at the beginning of Predator. And he's also very popular for, yeah, Predator definitely and Happy Gilmore. He's Chubbs and Happy Gilmore. Dylan, so. you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And finally, Burgess Meredith as Mickey, star of stage and screen. Got his start on Broadway. He's a character and stage actor. His movie career goes as far back as 1945, doing everything from drama to comedy. Some might know him as the Penguin in the 1960s Batman series with Adam West, but he's also been in Of Mice and Men, uh, Clash of the Titans, Camp Nowhere, and the voice of Globulus in the G.I. Joe animated movie. <laughs> Something about these old character actors that they just decide, you're going to be a villain in a cartoon. Have at it. But now that we know what went into making this film, Nigel! Can you tell us a bit about that trivia? Nope, there's nothing on this film. Found nothing on it whatsoever. Oh, th- really? No. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's there's a little bit. I'll I'll um I've got a little bit of trivia for it, and I've obviously got more as the movie goes on. Um, one of the biggest bits that I found is about the production of this film. After the producers, uh, Erwin Winkler and uh, Robert, um, how did you say his name, Tom? Kartoff, Shartoff, whatever. Uh, He's yes. not listening. It doesn't matter became interested in the script, they offered Sylvester Stallone an unprecedented $350,000 for the rights. At the time, he uh, only had $106 in his bank account, no car, and was trying to sell his dog because he couldn't afford to feed him anymore. Damn. Yeah, he had, but he refused to sell the script unless they allowed him to star in the film. 
they agreed on the condition that Stallone continued to work as a writer without a fee. Uh, and then his work as an actor would be for scale. After Winkler and Chartoff uh, purchased the film, they took it to United Artists, who envisioned a budget of about $2 million with an established star. Particularly, they were looking at Robert Redford, Ryan O'Neill, Burt Reynolds, or James Caan at the time. Uh, when Winkler and, and uh, Chartoff told United Artists that they could only get the screenplay if Stallone had was the star United artists and cut the budget to $1 million and had shot off and Winkler sign agreements that they would be personally liable. If the film went over budget, the vinyl cost to make this film was actually $1.1 million. Shartoff and Winkler mortgaged their homes for the last $100,000. Damn. <clears throat> but as Josh mentioned in the rundown, the film was a modest success. It's the highest grossing movie of 1976 and one of the highest profitable films of all time. I'm glad to see it all worked out in the end, but they <laughs> yeah. took a big risk with that. Yeah, don't ask me to put fifty thousand dollars on the line for a movie. Yeah, I mean, like it, it's it's easy to look at it in hindsight. It's like, well, I mean, are you serious? This movie's great. They didn't know it was going to be great. No one knew Sylvester Stallone was going to be uh, a star at this point. So I imagine that seems like, hey, first day of uh, filming, great job, Sly. Looking forward to this. Do not fuck this up. Yeah. Do not fuck this up. Do you know what I sacrificed? Yeah. So... My children are living out of cardboard boxes now. In a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> Take a drink. Wrong, wrong franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and it is kind of funny, though, that you compare the Rocky films in Sylvester Stallone's career is pretty fascinating with how the former progressively reflected the other. Mm hmm. Yeah. Art yeah. imitates life. Yeah, and I kind of touched on it a little bit in Nithix, Nighthawks, whatever. Josh, as we say, Nithix now too all the time. But, You're welcome. But uh, I mentioned it too in Nighthawks that um, Stallone made Rocky and then made Rocky 2 and made Nighthawks and a couple of other films, but they weren't successful. So he went back and made Rocky 3 and then after Nighthawks and then shortly after Rocky 3, he filmed Rambo. So like it was... Rocky three and Rambo were the two that really made Sylvester Stallone. This like what we think of a mess today, but uh, this film is where it started at all. This film is the movie that put him on the map and got him roles. Mm -hmm. This movie is a very big cornerstone in Hollywood cinema history for more than just the obvious. Another uh, bit of trivia that I found hilarious. Uh, it is the screen debut of a certain honorable Klingon. Um, Oh, 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 um, Christopher uh, Lloyd. Thank you. God, I can't believe I blanked on that. Ugh. No, it's not Christopher Lloyd. It's not? Michael Michael Dorn. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, Worf. Yes, Worf. He's one of uh, Apollo Creed's guards or, or um, security or whatever. He's Or one of his po – or not posse. He's not a thug. Uh, Apollo Creed's um, entourage or whatever. Like, I don't think he has any lines in the film. It's been forever since I've seen it, but he's in the movie. No shit. Yeah. That's his first film. Damn. Uh, and then um, two more things I got before we move on. Uh, most of the scenes of Rocky jockeying through Philadelphia were shot guerrilla style with no permits, no equipment, and no extras. The shots were runs past the moored boat, for example. The crew were simply driving by the docks. John G. Avidson saw the boat, thought it would make a good visual, so he had Sylvester Stallone simply get out of the van and run along the quays. So yeah, like they were filmed like a lot of those jogging scenes, like just guerrilla style, like no permits. They didn't close down the street. All the extras that you see in there are just real people just doing their thing in the morning or the afternoon. So, Dan, real quick, are you reading the uh, trivia for Rocky or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? <laughs> Rocky, why? It sounds like he's reading trivia from my college days as a film major. Because that's like almost the exact same trivia for them recording the uh, intro to It's Always Sunny. <laughs> oh, no, I, I legit found this from Rocky. So I, I'm just giving you shit. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Derailed. And then fatality. Which leads to obviously the jogging stuff with Rocky leads to the iconic shot of Rocky running up the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum. A scene that has become well, if you go to the Philadelphia Art Museum now, there's about three hundred people every hour recreating this. So but the iconic <laughs> The iconic shot of Rocky running up the, st the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum came about because of the Steadicam inventor, Garrett Brown. Brown, who was from Philadelphia, was getting ready to fly to Los Angeles to try to sell his newly invented Steadicam device. Uh, Steadicam is something we very much take for granted in modern filmmaking now. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So he had a shot some test footage following people around corridors and from room to room, but he really wanted to be able to shoot something that even the most experienced filmmakers would look at and say, Oh, how did he do that? So he came up with the idea for his girlfriend to run up and down the museum steps while he had followed closely behind her. Using this footage, Brown sold the camera on his first day in Los Angeles. And several months later, John G. Alvidson, who was prepping Rocky, saw the footage, felt that a similar style of shot would be perfect for this film, and as such, filmed the famous scene. Nice. Yeah. So it, that is a fun bit of trivia. Yeah. But yeah. We, like I said, we yeah, steady cam. Yeah. yeah steady cam is a huge deal in movies now. We take that for granted now. Like, and if you watch movies made before steady cam and after steady cam, you notice the difference. So yeah, steady cam's a big, a big deal now. Uh, yeah. it's something we very much take for granted now. Yeah. Um, making careers and technology. Yeah. This movie. Again, that's why I said this movie is a benchmark, not just for the obvious. And the last little bit of trivia I have before we get to the movie, and I'll pepper some more in because I do have some bits of trivia about certain scenes and stuff in the movie. This film is a good example of the of a trope that we call Beam Me Up Scotty. And for those not familiar with the trope, uh, Beam Me Up Scotty is a line that's often attributed to the original series of Star Trek that was never actually said on the original series. Not a single episode of Star Trek. And to this day, not a single episode of any Star Trek show or movie has ever said, be me up, Scotty. But anyways, Rocky's signature colors, whenever you think of Rocky Balboa, whenever you see a picture of Rocky Balboa, a poster of Rocky Balboa, cardboard cutout of Rocky, he's always in the red, white, and blue American flag trunks. Okay, mm-hmm. that's usually how people picture him. And usually when you see him like in parody, he's always in the red, white, and blue spangly trunks. But no, that's not true. Rocky's signature colors are black and gold, not red, white, and blue. Apollo lent him the American flag trunks for his rematch with Clubber Lang in Rocky 3. And then Rocky wore them against Drago in Rocky 4 for two reasons. Representing Apollo Creed, who dies against Ivan Drago, and he's representing the America when fighting Ivan Drago, who's from Russia. So Rocky's colors are not the red, white, and blue spangly trunks. Although, unlike Beam Me Up Scotty, he did eventually wear them, but the, the trope still kind of applies. People still think that those are the only trunks Rocky's ever worn. Same with Apollo Creed. A lot of people attribute the red, white, and blue trunks to Apollo Creed, but this is this and Rocky Four are the only movies where he wore those. He wears different trunks in Rocky Two when they have their rematch. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. right, because this movie was the bicentennial. The bicentennial. Yes. Yeah. So that makes sense. Oh my God. Yeah. But a lot of people always attribute either Rocky or Apollo as only wearing the American flag trunks when they have not. (laughs) Apollo's only worn them twice and Rocky's worn them twice, but he didn't wear them until way late in the franchise. I learned something new today. Nice. But that's all I've got for right now. I've obviously got more as the movie goes on, but um, yeah, honestly, we don't really need to know what anyone else thought of this film. So... Let's, let's watch a movie, guys. Well, <laughs> yeah, so we brought something to the table, Daniel and Matt. What do you got? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, some guest stars you guys are. I can't believe you guys made us do this, too. Um, actually, no, we're not doing the, we're not doing the quiz yet. I was kidding. Which actually, um, <laughs> I do want to know what your guys' expectations are for the well, film. And have you typically ever seen when it we, uh Typically, when we get to uh, Journey films, with very rare exceptions, all of us have seen it. So... I imagine both of you guys have seen this movie before, right? Yeah. Multiple times. Multiple times, yeah. So what we usually like to do in events like this is we usually like to talk about like the first time you've actually seen the movie. Just tell a short story about that. Or to kind like of the most memorable it. time. Or the most memorable it. time, yeah. Oh, man. So Matt, Danielle, we'll go ahead and start with you guys. I, I remember watching this movie with my dad. That It's one of those movies that we, we watched and I probably multiple times with my dad growing up. My dad was always one of those guys that was like the first person to buy a new piece of tech. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're like, the first adopter. Yeah. Yeah. He, but he always had a tendency to do like the one that didn't win out first. So we had a Betamax at first. Um, <laughs> and then we had a VHS. And I'm, I'm fairly certain that we've rented Rocky on both of them to watch them at some point. But I could also be remembering it wrong because, Yeah. How about, how about you, Matt? I really don't have any kind of specific memories of ever watching this with anybody. It's just one of those films that just kind of showed up someday and on TV. And I'm like, oh, this is that, that Rocky movie where, you know, he punches a guy. I'm like, I saw the Russian one first, I think, when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, I kind of went backwards and watched the earlier ones. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they were, they were great films. I have, you know, plenty of, you know, interesting good times watching it, but I've never had any specific moments. Where I'm like, yes, Rocky, must watch it. 
Now, did you guys like it the first time you saw it? I I liked it, but I think I was probably more enamored of the music because I was fairly young, if that mm. makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt, but but oh, I did on, like the film. Go ahead. And, and Matt, oh, yeah, you said I you went it. backwards in time. So, okay. And Daniela, Matt, what are you expecting on this film for this, your second? Or- I expect to enjoy the film um, and, and um, you know... A lot of nostalgia related to this movie. Like I said, I watched it when I was pretty young the first time. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to sing along with the Eye of the Tiger music. That's not in this one. Oh, that's definitely. That's, that didn't come out until What's three. Whatever the, uh... Gonna, Gonna fly, fly now. now. That's in all of them. That's right. That's, <laughs> which, that's like, which wait, weirdly Eye of the Tiger's I... not in this one? <laughs> weirdly, when I was actually, you know, attempting to be in shape, and, um... That song, the the Bill Conti um, score, was definitely a good one to run to. It actually had a pretty good pace that you could actually run to. I don't work out at all, and when that song comes on my playlist, I just start kind of jogging. <laughs> like, wait, what? Dan, stop mm-hmm. it. You're going to be out of breath in like five steps. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Tom, it's on to you. All right. Excellent segue, Matt. Um, yeah, it took me a long time to actually finally see this film another story of me being bored and just having nothing to do and just renting a bunch of movies from family video and i finally went around or got around to watching it um still haven't seen the second rocky but this one having having seen the third and the fourth one um, the fourth one a few times, in fact. This one caught me off guard and how much it wasn't like the other ones. Yeah. And so I'm glad I saw it when I was older, because if I had seen it when I was younger, I would not have liked it as much, I don't think. But I loved it uh, when I did see it, finally, because it was so different from all of the others. No real specific memories, but just seeing it and going, this is where it started? Really? Montages and happy birthday poly robots started with this? <laughs> my, so my expectations on this film, I, I know this will be my second time watching it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I'm going, what I missed um, the first time I saw it. Because it's been a few years now. And eager to see this again, especially after a couple good 70s films uh, that we've had. Um, Nigel, what about you? Any specific memories and any specific expectations? No, um, I actually started with three. Three is the very first Rocky movie I ever watched as a kid, mostly because it had Mr. T in it and the A-Team was on TV at the time. So that's why I watched it. Oh, yes. um, and it was obviously really taken aback that he's very much a bad guy in Rocky three and not a lovable B.A. Baracus that he is in uh, the A-Team. I used to avoid this one mostly because Rocky loses. <laughs> so I don't know why I just when I was a kid, I'm like, I don't want to watch the one where he loses. Um, but then you know, when I did finally come around, like I came around to watch this one as a young adult came around to watching and like the movie is about so much more than just the boxing match. It's about like, you know, it really is the journey of, of Rocky's life and Rocky's chance and one in a million and this mm-hmm. the love story he has with Adrian and all that. So I'll get into more of that, hopefully with final thoughts, because it has been a while since I've seen this one. Um, I haven't watched it since I went to go watch Rocky Balboa in the theaters a couple of years ago. So that was the last time I watched this one. Mm-hmm. So um, it's been a while since I've seen it. But um, but yeah, so I don't have any specific memories attached to this film, but I love all the Rocky movies. Like I said, five is the only one I skip. Five is the only one I can't stand. Uh, five is the only one that I would nuke from orbit and uh, never speak of again. And if I die tomorrow, having not watched five ever again, I'm OK with that. So because um, it makes no sense. Why is he broke? Anyways, um, I have <laughs> I have thoughts on five. It doesn't make any goddamn sense in the universe. But um, particularly when later he owns a restaurant, it makes no sense. How was he broke? He fucking beat the fucking Russian champion in Russia. Anyway, so like we said, Dan has thoughts. I have thoughts. It just makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to cancel watching Rocky tonight. We're just going to watch Rocky Five. If you want to listen to my a- final, if you want to listen to my final thoughts, be a thirty-minute rant on how Rocky is broke for no fucking reason. <laughs> but that's all I've got to say for like a story or expectations. Um, for me, Josh, what about you? You got any particular uh, memories or anything attached to this movie? Have you ever seen it before? Oh yeah, I've seen okay. this movie a bunch of times. I gotta say, my absolute favorite scene is the one scene where Hugh Jackman and his son go into the courtyard and they take their robot and then they win their first bout <laughs> against the other robot. Wrong franchise. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie, right? Uh-oh. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I do I do actually like, I love this movie. This is probably the third or fourth time I've seen it. Um, honestly, first time I saw it was back in 2008. Um, I had wow. seen... Yeah, I was a late addition to watching this one, but I watched Rocky in the 90s, like Rocky 3 and 4, and I watched Rocky Balboa. I think that was actually my first, second Rocky movie I'd ever seen. I watched Rocky Balboa when it came out in 2006. What got me in watching it was I was actually PCSing from living overseas in England back to the States. So I had my laptop, and all I had was just a handful of movies. So I got a hold of the entire Rocky series and me and my wife marathoned them as we were stuck waiting on our plane and flying overseas. So I remember we watched that coming back to the States for the first time in like three years. Well, not the first time I'd been back over those three years, but we were, we were moving back to the States, but I know I loved the movie when I saw it and I'm like, man, this, this is really good. Even though it was an older film, because you know, if anybody who's listened to the podcast knows I have an aversion to older films. An allergic reaction, I think, is more accurate, but... So, the fact that I went back and actually watched that one was huge at the time, but I did like it, and I did like Rocky II. Um, love Rocky Three and Four. I really like the first and second one, too, so don't get me wrong, I'm not putting those... I put those on a different level of the late, later franchise. Yeah, films. I would say Three is where he starts to become kind of a cartoon character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're definitely uh, different types of films, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I do really enjoy the Creed series, too. I'm looking forward if they ever decide to release a third one. So, yeah, I, I do enjoy Rocky series, the Rocky series. Um, I'm looking forward to watching this movie tonight. So I know exactly what I'm expecting out of it, just because you know, I've seen it a few times. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's that's really all I've got on the movie. Awesome. So now that we've finished the expectations, yeah. Um, on to Dan's favorite segment. I mean, I'm just looking forward. How I mean, is he broke? I'm sorry. I thought, I in a cave you, <laughs> with a box of scraps. I thought, I thought you were giving me a platform again to continue my rant about number five. No, I'm just kidding. How is he broke? It makes no sense. No, but he'd on be, a meta, me, on he'd a be meta back level. in the black in a week. Land the plane. Come on, Dan. Stop, <laughs> Dan. We're cutting you off. <laughs> Damn it. All right. But on a meta level, when was the last time all of us have got together to watch a movie? Is Avengers a, uh, Infinity War was the last time all of us saw a movie together. Mm-mm. Damn, has it been wrong? No, Return, Return of the, the Jedi, Jedi 2019. 2019, New Year's Eve. Holy God, it's been. We weren't really, really watching the movie up. that night. We weren't really paying attention to the movie. I'm talking like the last time we all sat down and watched a movie together was definitely Avengers in not Endgame, Infinity War, because Return of the Jedi was playing on New Year's Eve, but we weren't really paying attention to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Until it was time to blow up the Death Star and kill all the Ewoks in the debris. Yes, yeah, so it's like, oh wait, that's, something's happening. Hey, Happy New Year! Uh, yeah, wow, it's been that long since we've seen a film. Well, I mean, of any movie we're going to see after two years of not hanging out together, might as well be Rocky. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. Stupid COVID. Ugh, God. Frazzle, 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 frazzle. <laughs> You guys are hearing what he sounds like when the Browns lose, by the way. <laughs> Who, Dan or Matt? Matt. I don't no, care me. when the Browns lose. How, 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 uh, how does he lose? How does he lose taking a dump? God. That's our expectations on the film. Like I said earlier, on to Dan's favorite segment. That's not it, Josh. Just Can we just get this quiz over with, please? Or I'm going to start ranting why Rocky's broken five again. Yes, I am too am curious to find out what other people thought of this movie. And since I won the last quiz, I get to do it this time. Ha ha! Yeah, except that it's a destination episode and you have guest people. It was my turn. 
it's supposed to be my turn. So anywho, we have our quiz tonight. <laughs> now, Danielle, are you and Matt giving it, or is Matt going to be participating? How do you want to do it, honey? You want us to uh, switch off? Or yeah, that wanna... sounds all right. Okay. 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 All right, so mm-hmm. it's going to be me, Tom, and Dan. The uh, journey culmination of our quiz section here. Basically, same rules apply. We're going to guess on a scale of 1 to 10, whatever these reviews are. These are IMDb reviews that she's going to be giving us. Correct. If we're on the money, we get two points. If Otherwise, it's one point. If we're even distance apart, whoever gets closest without going over gets it. You can't pick the same answers. And um, we're going to have seven questions. So whoever has the highest amount wins. Whatever. We need steaks. I think that's what it is. We need to have steaks on this. Ooh, I could go for a steak. Uh, Can I make mine a porterhouse um, medium? Mm. Mm, I love steak. Yes. Mm. Oh, anywho. Tom... Gets to go first since he won oh. yesterday, unless Danielle wants to pick somebody. Tom can go first. Yes! <laughs> All right. And this is just one line out of a review or the title of the review. And you guys want me to tell you who the review was by, too, correct? If I'm cool. right. You can't. I always forget to list the username, so I don't make a big deal about it. I okay. like it because sometimes you get some fun names but you are the keeper of the quiz today do it as you will okay so first one from user kudosta hagen i'm not saying i can i'm pronouncing these right just letting you know they're there okay rocky feels like a stereotypical inspirational film the great music the training scenes it's one hell of a cliche the hell of a cliche tells me it's a little higher than low so i'm gonna say six who do you want to go next daniel uh, Josh, go ahead. Um, I'm going to go 10. Ballsy. And Dan? How is he broken? <laughs> um, no, I'm going to go f- f- four. I'm actually going to say four. Tom had it on the nose. Boom, Ooh, baby. Ouch. I knew it. It sounded too positive to be negative. That doesn't make sense. And yeah, that's the point of it. Moving on. Two points for Tom. Yes. All right, Matt. All right. This is a line from a review from Rebel Jen. The story drags on a little bit, but those moments are worth fighting for. So we're going to start off with Tom again, since he was the uh, winner the last time. I'll accept that. I'm going to go with nine. Josh? Could you read it one more time? The story drags on a little bit, but those moments are worth fighting for. I'm going to say eight. Price is right, jerk. Ten. Oh, you (laughs) bastards. You guys are all going on to the high side there. It was only four out of ten. Ha <laughs> ha, I got that point. <laughs> that was a four out of ten? Seriously. Yep. yep. What do people who hate this movie have to say? We'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase this one. Um, this is from uh, user Jacob John Taylor 1. Jacob John Taylor 1. Yeah. Rocky 2 is better. Rocky 3 is better. Rocky 4 is also better. Rocky 5 is also better. No, 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 no. no. I got reasons why Rocky 5 is not better. Hold on, let me talk about this for a minute. Mute, Dan. (laughs) I'm going to go... I'm going to go 1. Dan, you want to go next? I'm going to say 2. Tom? 3. None of you guys... (laughs) It's a five out of ten. <laughs> so Tom got it. He was closest. <laughs> five out of ten. Yeah. Wow. So he gives Rocky one a five out of ten, but he says Rocky five is better. Dan, shut up. <laughs> I have thoughts. <laughs> oh man, Matt gets to read my favorite one. Okay, Matt, <laughs> you're up. <laughs> All right. This is brought to you by a Lee Eisenberg. My orthodontist has an outline of Sylvester Stallone's body filled with pages from the Rocky script. What? My orthodontist. <laughs> My orthodontist has... has an outline of Sylvester Stallone's body filled with pages from the Rocky script. That's. Can you use that in a sentence? <laughs> that is the sentence. We're gonna start off with Tom again. <laughs> I... That's fairly serial killer like. I'm a little concerned, but I'm gonna say that this is, I guess, an eight. I don't know with this one. All right, Josh. Ballsy move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, seven. Oh, God. I'm going to say a 
Nine? Nine. <laughs> Dan's closest. Ten? Yep, it it's is a, a ten, ten out of ten. ten, of ten. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm not getting <laughs> shut out, so that's something. Jesus, God. <laughs> you guys are jerks. <laughs> You you made us do it. <laughs> Not you two, these two bastards. <laughs> yeah, we boxed you in. <laughs> Literally left nut and right nut over here. <laughs> so the penis sits between the middle. Tom's the dick. <laughs> Clearly I'm the dick in this. Confirmed. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah, yep. we're ready. All right. Dan goes first. So this comes to you from user Polar24. It's a little bit longer. 1976, a landmark year in cinema and one of the most heavily contested Academy Awards in history. No matter how you look at it, the 70s was the greatest time for American cinema. Scorsese, Coppola, Lament. Some of the fiercest battles were won in the Academy Awards, and it was an exciting time for moviegoers. While Rocky may get a bad rap for beating out some of these American classics for the prize, the fact remains it is still a powerful inspirational film about a man's dreams to be the best no matter what obstacles lie in his way is the name of this review tell me you're a film major without telling me you're a film major no oh, okay. <laughs> but, it doesn't, but it's not out of the realm of possibility re, re, who was the guy who wrote that again Tom. <laughs> is this his Tom. username is his username T Tom, editor Tom's- <laughs> this is username British name Thompson. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> All, right. All right, Dan, what do you think? I think that this guy likes the sound of his own voice, and I think he likes to be the smartest guy in the room. So I'm going to go in and say he gets Rocky like a six. Huh? Who do you want next? What's up, Tom? No, I want Josh to go next. Okay, they Josh. you, douchebag. <laughs> what? Whoever wants it, go. Okay, fine, I'll go. It's, um, ten. Josh? Nine. It was a five out of ten. <laughs> I almost said four. I was like, oh, this is going to be one of those he hates the movie. <laughs> So it are we are we miss. saying Dan is the closest and he gets the point, or is it you oh, know yeah. without going over? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> all right. Lord. Do we want to go with all of them? Because we've got like nine of these. Oh my god. So go <laughs> That's, we can oh, go let's with... just do to seven. Let's just go to seven. Yeah. Nope, but right so now, I'm pretty Tom sure the Geneva three, Convention heard... outlines what the rules for this are. Well, Dan's got two. All right, so we're going on to number six now. Yeah. We're on six. All right. This is brought to you by the last me saw. Uh, last time I saw. That's what it is. <laughs> Aha. I can read. Uh, he says, another Oscar best picture winner to tick off any so-called cinephiles watch list. Well, we're going to start this one off with Dan. I'm, uh, I'm going to say nine. Solid answer. Josh. Let's go eight. And top. Ten. Josh got eight. it on the nose. Boom. Yes, it's an 8 out of 10. Son of a bitch! And Josh and Tom are now tied. That's what you get for trying to be a nut instead of a dick. (laughs) Uh, uh. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, picture that now. I really didn't need that. (laughs) Alright, so since we're we're only going to do one more, I'm going to skip down one. Skip down a couple. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? This comes from user name... Tick? Tick is um, in tick? C E H C K. Yeah. Alright, ready? Yep. A, a Popeye cartoon has more realistic action. Fuck you! <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> I'm gonna say a one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say two. I'll say. I guess three, because it's low. Dan got it on the nose, which means he's now actually the winner. (laughs) (laughs) Come from behind! (laughs) Congratulations, Dan. You make the other two give you stakes now. Uh, gonna make them you get to me. do the next quiz. Oh. You? Congratulations, buddy! Good job, Dan! Yay! I'm so jealous! You're gonna do the quiz! 
Oh, somebody put me back in the fridge. <laughs> I thought you guys would appreciate some fun, so we, we did that. <laughs> How's it feel, Dan, to be the winner of the journey? Fuck you, Tom. Play the music. Welcome back to another championship episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and cut man, Tom. That eye's looking pretty swollen there, kid. Let me just get in there with this razor and relieve some pressure. And... Oh, jeez! Oh, shit, 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 shit. I mean, you look great, kid. Now, get back in there. Should have used a smaller razor. But thank you for cutting it up here with us at the fire pit. We're finally at the main event! The culmination of all our training, the destination of our marathon to Pound Town, Rocky! We've taken on gangsters, taxi drivers, and even Civil Shepherd herself! But can we go the distance? Well, clearly we can because we're here now! Before we continue, we want to give a quick shout out to this month's sponsor, Podbean. We've been hosting and posting with Podbean for over a year now, and they've been boss enough to make us their featured podcast. We will have more about them and what they're offering near the end of this episode, so be sure to stick around to learn more. In the meantime, let's learn more about how the team is handling their most recent loss. And here we are in the fire pit locker room as the group discusses their post-fight loss. Tom is swaying in the breeze here. It looks like a wet leaf about to go under the lawnmower. To get the license number of the base that ran over your truck. They look to be propping him up against the wall. Wait, what's this? Why, I believe that's a White Claw representative. Who, where? Dan and Josh are approaching the White Claw representative cautiously, but eagerly. Two tigers approaching a bigger tiger. Wow. Pleasure to meet you, sir. We're huge, huge, huge fans of your product. Like, big. The biggest. Do not lump me into your little cult. You and Tom are fans. You ask me, White Claws are right up there with Crocs, face tattoos, and people who still watch The Walking Dead after season two. Huge fans. You're gonna eat crap and lightning thunder. Now it looks like the White Claw representative is leading Dan to the side. Dan's having some trouble getting his defenses up. He really has them against the ropes. That's a locker, Matt. The representative is pulling out a document. It looks like a contract. What's this? Dan's smiling. That, 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 that's a comma, right? That's not a decimal. Josh! What are you doing there, Dan? Oh my god, yes. Yes, I do. I do, yes, a hundred times, yes. Please, yes. Go in the alley and eat the bird. He's on board, too. That means yes, yeah, he's on language. board. Yes. KO, the fire pit is down. To sign on the dotted line. Documents are being signed. Hands are being Come shaken. On. It looks like they have a deal. I can do this all day. Wrong, Wrong franchise. Hey, White Claw. For real, though, hit us up. But if you want to hit us up for some ads of your own, or if you want to hit us up for some ideas for your own movie watching experience, or if you want to hit us up for some shout outs, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email. Whether it's to send a movie idea, inquire about sponsoring the podcast, shout out some friends, or what have you, and mail it our way. From there, we'll read it, give it a shot at the heavyweight championship, send it through months of rigorous training for the big event, and never respond. It never made weight. You know, what with it being an email and all. Man, we really do need to vet these ideas ahead of time. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, 
at gmail.com. You're doing really great, kid. You really. Ooh. Oh, uh, you feeling all right, kid? Y you're looking pretty pale. I'm gonna see if I can't mop up some of this blood and get it back into this guy. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. Does anyone have an extra bucket? Or at least a funnel? I think this is gonna take a while. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Well, time to go out back and make another 20. Oh, God's sakes. This is what our watch sections are like. This is literally just, uh, it's going to be two hours of Josh and Penis jokes for the rest of the night. <laughs> it does not matter the context of the movie. I was just saying he was going to take out the trash. That's where Dan's mind went, though. That's where you always go. You know, I've been coming in for six years. In six years, you've been sticking it to me. I want to know how come. Because you had the talent to become a good fighter. And instead of that, you became a leg breaker. So I'm cheap, second-rate loan shark. To living? It's a waste of life. Oh, yeah, well, well, you, you. Look dumb in that hat. And tried to kill Batman. Everybody's on my side here, Mick. <laughs> you know, I love running. It's a hobby. I love running. But I say the worst part about running is the actual running. Oh, God, yes, it sucks. I can confirm this. You know how I got started in fighting? No. Am I talking too loud? Three oh. minutes. The Samboni driver's talking too loud. Can we go beat him to death? You bowling home. Hey. Hey, you don't talk dirty about your sister. But yeah, I totally am. You rock. What? How about you give us your money? Get out of here! Don't you ever interrupt me. Goddamn TikTok thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat him. Paolo? Yeah. Because there was nobody before. That don't matter either, you know? I know you're going to fight the biggest fight of your entire life here in like 12 hours, but can you shut up so I can get some sleep? Shut up, Rock. Don't be such a big fucking pussy. <laughs> you know, the last turtle food I got here had more moss in it than flies. You know what I mean? Right? I got to smack them on the back of the show. What do you think they get? Come on. Show shot. Take your show shot. This guy is what you call a panty dropper. It's always really cool watching two socially awkward people try to have a romantic scene. My friend let me in one day, and I hit the beef here, and I kind of liked Is this a common training method? I mean, do other fighters pound raw meat? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yes. No, 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 that was my job before I was a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, p I pound my raw meat all the time. I pounded it ten minutes before this interview. What? You'll be ready, won't you? Why? Because I waited for 50 years to make you ready. We're going to kill Batman! That's right, this is going to be the greatest sporting event in the country's history, with me beating Green like he committed a crime. Muhammad Ali loved Carl Weathers as Apollo Creed and regretted that he didn't name himself the Master of Disaster. He would also later go on to make the greatest because of this movie. So, you know, take the good, take the bad. You loser! I don't get married because of you! I put you through the get at you! So are all their Christmases like this? Probably. The guy who spent the entire movie shit-faced, so... Merry Christmas from the Rocky <laughs> family. <laughs> I hope you enjoy family drama, because you have it in spades. I see you guys on New Year's. Happy holidays from my family to yours. There we go. Montage. Finally! Oh, bam! Right in the Here we go. The freaking montage. 130. 57. <laughs> it's time in Rocky 4. We were in Rock Montage number 6. Apollo was dead. Ba -da -da. Ba -ba -bum. Hey, Rocky! Hey, what's your hat? I love you! I love you! Yeah, but where is your hat? The thing's expensive. Oh! Hey now, you're an all-star, get your game on, get paid. Last warning, or I will go on a rant about why he's broke again. And now, back to the episode. Well, we went the distance, team! We finally did it! Three hours to watch a two-hour movie, but we <laughs> finally finished Rocky! My god, that felt... 
like an actual boxing match. Oh, dear Lord. Technical difficulties on a destination film at their fullest. Oh, God. But that's a story for another time. Let's have the story about how we enjoyed Rocky. So, Josh, what did you think of the movie? I thought it crapped farts and lightning thunder. That's what he said, right? Close, Close enough. En- yeah, it works. Okay, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> See, at this point in the in the recording, I could pretty much get away with saying whatever I want, and the guys just can be like, "Whatever, it's it's late." But, Three in uh, the morning. <laughs> oh, as usual, this was a fantastic movie. Um, slow, very slow. But like as we said in what was it, the last picture show, mm-hmm. or no, was it the last picture show or Starman? Both. Just because slow doesn't mean boring. Mm-hmm. The movie was really slow, but it did a lot of good building up. You know, the characters. It was definitely a character-driven movie. Mm-hmm. Unlike its successors, this movie really focused on Rocky and how everybody around him is just, with the exception of Adrian, is just a total asshole. <laughs> well, it is in Philadelphia, so... It is in Philadelphia, so, you know, it's just par for the course I guess. we may actually be seeing the only two nice people in philadelphia yeah. yeah yeah but i really don't have a lot to say on the film it's well acted well directed Polly's a total dick um yeah that's all i got so dan what did you think of rocky the first one not the fifth one um rocky no this one <laughs> this one he is broke but he's supposed to be broke so it's okay um no this <laughs> it's okay it's part this is that it's just this is establishing his character um no this i still love this movie it, it's a really good character movie i don't know like i said it's, it's kind of weird you're seeing like rocky and adrian are basically the only two decent people in all of philadelphia but you know rocky's from a rough neighborhood of philadelphia so rough neighborhood usually equals rough people i mean that that's okay um but uh, it it's so weird. Like I like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen this one. But I've watched like the other ones more recently, especially like two and three and even four. Like you know, three and four is where he becomes kind of a cartoon character. It's kind of weird going back and seeing like Polly is such a fucking sleazy piece of shit in this movie, and he's quasi likable in the sequels, especially f- four, where he's just kind of like your fat somewhat drunk uncle who's just kind of like bumbling around but in this one he's such an ass and then and like uh, uh seeing apollo who's a total heel in this one and being you know not not a very nice guy a, a decent guy i don't think apollo's an evil person Mm-mm. but he's definitely kind of like yeah he's, he's he's crass he's a little uh manipulative you know with the fight and all that um kind of with this whole like oh i'm giving someone an opportunity you know it's like no he just he basically wants to beat up jobbers it's just kind of weird seeing some of the characters in their early forms even rocky and adrian are kind of like not rocky and adrian of the sequels like rocky's very much this like bumbling and motor mouth kind of guy socially awkward but adrian's also socially awkward but she's also shy so they're socially awkward in completely different ways rocky never knows when to shut up and adrian never gets an idea of when to start talking so it's kind of weird watching them kind of go through the mo or not go through the motions but go through this whole like song and dance of like trying to fall in love but it's sweet too at the same time and i kind of like rocky's um description of it we fill gaps you know, I've got gaps and she got gaps. And between the two of us, we fill the gaps. So I mm-hmm. thought that was kind of cute. Um, but yeah, that's just what I like about this movie. It's just I love all the characters in it. And I just love seeing the early versions of the characters, knowing what they turn into in the sequels. And some of them get a little flanderized. That's all I got to say for now. I'll wait till we get some group discussions there. Uh, Tom, what about you? Honestly, I kind of have to echo a bit of some of your sentiments there. The best parts of this movie, I think, were the Adrian Rocky stuff. I, I was rooting more for the romance of those two than Rocky fighting the fight, to be honest. But, you know, I, I kind of, Adrian's my type. So maybe there's a bit of projection there. Compare and contrast, as, we, as we've said, and are going to say that this film versus what it would become. Just the, not just the storytelling, because this was absolutely kind of just a character study, just following 
this guy who's going to have this one moment to try just to be something. We're just following him, just being there, seeing what he's like, getting his insights. Just nothing flamboyant, nothing wild. The fights he's in are just not showy at all. Everything's mm-hmm. just very story driven, very personal. The, the, the camera work too, just very ground level, not what would eventually become just an MTV music video and montages. In fact, this whole film had one montage. Incredible. I've, I'm going to nitpick this film and I kind of, it's not really a nitpick. I think it is a legitimate uh, criticism is Rocky's character is too nice. He's a lone shark heavy that doesn't break thumbs. And he's so nice that the loan shark is like, come on, come on, buddy. You know, here's have some money for your date. Uh, you know, he goes and talks to girl like kids, like, hey, don't be smoking. Don't be a floozy, this sort of thing. Granted, he's in Philly, so they call him out on it as they should. He's not over the top with it, but it's not like Rudy or anything like that. But eh, take it back a little bit, I think. You, you can't be like the the knee buster for a mob boss and be the nicest guy in town. But you know what? It helped you connect to the guy. You wanted to root for this guy. So you had to show him to be this kind of like shining knight that's stuck in Philadelphia. Otherwise you'd be rooting more for Apollo to kick his ass. Yeah. As opposed to seeing him go the distance. And also too, a lot of what the people would become Seeing how what they started out, Mick was a total opportunist. He start later on, he's like this dad figure, but he's a total like leads. Like, oh, now you get a chance with the with the champ. Oh, well, <laughs> well then, oh, I can totally help you out, Rocky. <laughs> oh, your locker. That's right. Uh, I've got a few additional thoughts, but I don't want to steal everything here. Still a great movie and a fantastic cap to this journey. I will go alphabetically, Danielle. What do you think <laughs> Matt thought of this film? <laughs> I'm okay with her talking for me. She speaks better anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> but no, Danielle, what are your thoughts? My thoughts? Um, it's, it's still as great a movie as the last time I watched it. You know what I mean? It's... It has been a while, though, so it's it's kind of seeing it with fresh eyes with this and li- watching it with you guys. Um, very character-driven. And you guys have all talked about essentially the same points I would make. But So I'll say, way to go to see Burgess Meredith, ba- who's an extremely experienced actor, basically just let, you know, Sl- Sylvester Stallone shine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A true professional too, because he absolutely. only he got the, he got the part of Mickey because the other actors they considered for the role were absolutely insulted that Sylvester Stallone wanted them to read for it, and Burgess Meredith is like, "I'll read for the part." Exactly. Yeah. So it's it, it was great seeing something like that, like an experienced actor really let like he shines definitely in what he was doing. But letting a newcomer like Sylvester Stallone really, really yeah. make he it. He didn't try to steal the scenes. Absolutely. No, he didn't. He was a professional. Professional's professional. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it's just amazing. I mean, the fact that this movie was made in general, because the, the first round of this script, what, took him three days to write? <laughs> yeah, blew my mind. And he was basically rewriting the script the entire time they were working on the movie. So excellent character study for something. It was basically in editing mode the entire time they were filming. Kind of like one of our skits. <laughs> yeah. So I said, we know a thing or three about that. <laughs> and of course, and of course the music is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot how good the score was to this one. Like uh, oh, the yeah. score to the, the other Rockies is pretty good, especially two. I really like the score to two, but the score to this movie is really good. All right. That's it for me, Matt. Uh, ditto. <laughs> How can we put, as always, Mr. Matt? <laughs> Look, there's really nothing more to say. There's You guys pretty much did everything. So verbose. Hey, hold hold it back, man. This is 
we're trying to keep this episode under two hours. Yep, you're welcome, then. <laughs> I think with all the weird technical difficulties we have, that probably won't be that hard. <laughs> yeah, I think this will be our shortest episode by default. But that's neither here nor there. But no, Matt, I mean, again, this uh, it's been a while since you saw this last. I mean, is there anything you noticed this time around that you maybe didn't notice the first time, the second God, time? It's, it's been a number of years, so pretty much half the movie was something I hadn't remembered at all. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the bits where he's in the, the meat packing plant punching the, the slabs of beef. You know, the, the constant drunk. Like, I always knew the, the Polly was a drunk from the other movies, but not to this extent. Yeah. Mm. I forgot how much of a dickhead Polly is in the first one as compared to the other ones. Yeah. Like, so yes, or the, uh, the total, like the new fresh kind of actors that they were at the time. So there are some established characters. Yes. For, you know, Burgess Meredith and whatnot, but some of these people who you know never really been in anything major or mm. had only ever been in stuff that their brother directed. Yeah. Now we were going to call out anyone in particular, Tommy or Sharp. No, <clears throat> no, no. I actually, I was, I was looking it up. She wanted to get away from that, so she took this with the very low pay that she received for this movie, just no, so she... she could get away. Yeah. Damn. Damn. On good on her. Good I mean, not you, that Tom. she probably didn't mind working with her her brother, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it separated her out from only doing it gets his her out of it. Like. Gets people to stop thinking it's like, oh, she's only doing this because she's, you know. Mm-hmm. But she she made like a little over seven thousand dollars to do this film. Damn. Wow. She, yeah, she's a Coppola, and she turned she went that low. Man, that's impressive. But Matt, did you have any additional thoughts? Any? No, no, I've, I've said pretty much my piece. I'm pretty good. And I did cool. love you guys were pointing out, yeah, how all the actors just played with each other, how they worked together. Yeah, Talia Shire's interactions with rocky especially in the beginning just that aloofness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, just everything else you know one thing about i loved the character interactions i loved the evolution of their relationship in this movie too yeah Mm -hmm. how they went from you know courting to dating to being like in a relationship to that dysfunctional family christmas yeah (laughs) right before the dysfunctional family christmas like the way he's sitting with her yeah, like she's sitting on that chair and he's just kind of resting up against her knees. Like that's stuff that like an established couple kind of does. That's the way like my me and my wife will sit on the couch together. There's another scene too where he's watching the press conference before him or the the right after he agreed to fight Apollo, and him and um, Adrian are sitting on the couch together and she's just kind of sitting there, kind of laid back and she's got her head up, or her hand up on his shoulder, mm. just kind of resting her hand on her shoulder. I was like, that's how me and my wife sit on the couch. Like, and we've been married now for going on 16 years. So yeah, it's, it's very like the evolution of their relationship. They were awkward around each mm-hmm. other. And then like, they slowly started to date and then you slowly started to see that up to the very end when they were just like, he went 15 rounds with the heavyweight champion of the world. And all he cared about was, you know, his girlfriend. Yeah. And the way he made her better. It's like he was this, Mousy, shy glasses, big coat. I was, was going to say to the point where she could actually stand up to her brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they both they both helped each other out. You know, it's like the story was about them bettering each other. It wasn't he, about he put it that way in the movie. Rocky says that to Polly. He says, we've got gaps. I've got gaps and she's got gaps. And together we fill the gaps. Yeah. yeah it's like, one. yeah, it's the, that's the central co- core tenant of this movie. It's not a, about the boxing match. It's about the relationships that make the boxing match. Yeah, yeah. It's a love story disguised as a boxing movie, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the women. So when the women get something and the men get something, yeah. and by the men getting something, I'm talking about a shirtless Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> it is though the the ultimate underdog movie, though. Yeah, he doesn't win. I mean, he has the moral victory, but at the end of the day, it's Apollo Creed who got his hand raised. So, I don't know. I think Rudy could go the distance on that fight. Oh, uh, see, this establishes that Rudy just takes off of it. Yeah, this is a Rudy's a Rocky clone. Yeah. Well, yeah. well but still, uh, it's it's one of the, it's, it's a good movie. It's a it's a good movie with a lowercase G. Um, 
I but, know your opinions or, on it. Or as Tom likes to put it, underdog porn. Google it. No, Tragedy Sue. It's an actual trope. Tragedy Sue. Look it up. I won't go into that tangent. Dan's and underdog I, porn. No, no. You. Did we lose Dan? Because normally he comments on three things by now. No, I'm fine. I'm just... Um, He's resisting the urge to talk about Rocky V. No, I'm not. I'm just... Why is he broke? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's still there. If you've been taking a drink through this episode, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. You have liver poisoning. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Polly's the worst. Can we all agree? Polly is the worst. Yeah, yeah. Polly is Polly. the worst. Like I said, he's not... He's not a great person in the sequels, but at least he's not like this. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah, everybody else becomes uh gets flanderized to a bit. Polly kind of mellows out. Yeah, Polly mellows out and he's still an asshole, especially in, like the first part. It, honestly, this story the the, the, the shit between Polly and Rocky kind of comes to a head at the beginning of number 3, where R- Rocky's now the world champ and he's famous and rich and all that and Polly's jealous of him and and kind of gives him shit for it and says, you owe me, you owe me. And Rocky says, I don't owe you anything. Nobody owes anybody nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I kind of like that. I kind of like how they brought it full circle like that. But yeah, he does kind of mellow out a little bit and become less of a dick. A little bit. I, I got a question. If you were to rank the Rocky movies, where would you put this one? Number two. Yeah, because definitely Rocky five would be number one for you, right, Dan? No, uh, Rocky. Quickly, quickly, someone else talk quickly, quickly, Danielle, no. Matt, where would you put this? <laughs> Definitely no. number two. I Probably like the number two. I like the one with the Russian better. I like the second one better. I think the second one's a little bit better. And it's not just because Rocky wins at the end. It's just that I I just like Rocky two kind of feels like Rocky one with a slightly bigger budget. And like, you know, so it just, probably is. It is. It is. It's it's but I would put this one number two, but it's my Star Trek six versus Star Trek two argument. If someone says this is the best Rocky movie, I, I'm going to say, OK, yeah, it's like you're not going to really listen to any arguments unless they say Rocky V. No, you know, Rocky five is not better than this one. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, I'm going to say this is number one on my list, but Rocky three, I'd have to almost say is second because it feels like he became Apollo Creed in the third film. Um, but this one, just how real it felt this this was a standalone story it didn't need any sequels it should have just been what it was but you know money is money and we have the rocky franchise which will eventually become the creed franchise which will then become i don't know what was that one cat's name that rocky beat up in the beginning of this film spider rico spider rico Spider Rico, yes, that'll be the third part of this. Whole his grandkid, series. yeah, his grandkid, Spider. Spider Rico's children come yeah. back for revenge. Yeah, why doesn't Spider Rico's kids like fight Creed in the in the third films? Like, your my dad used to beat up Rocky. Now I it's think my because kid. he's pretty much a forgettable character. Mm, which is yeah, why he was literally in the first five minutes. Yeah. yeah, which is why his grandkid is going to come to make a name for Spider Rico. Actually, Spider Rico's working for him in Rocky Balboa. Is he really? Yeah, is he's, he? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's he work he's working in the restaurant with him. Man, I'll need to go back and rewatch that. Yeah, he's either he's either works in the restaurant or he's like a delivery like he he's a food delivery guy for the restaurant. But either way, Spider Rico has a scene in Rocky Balboa, and they're just they're chatting like chums so there's i don't think there's going to be any revenge tales from (laughs) spider rico's kids but i think i would have to uh, be the dissenting change when far as i'm ranking my film since you know nobody asked god (laughs) where would you rank it josh oh thanks for asking (laughs) sorry man we just got to talking and it's all tom's fault i i blame tom too but honestly i think i would rank this uh number three Really? I think, yeah, I think I would do Rocky 3 out of pure nostalgia. That's the one I always go to and I'll just pick up and watch. And then I want to say, I think I like Rocky Balboa. Like the 2006, you know, one. Like old <laughs> Rocky, his retirement one. Because he has that one speech where he's given his son in the street that is just it's best speech in the Rocky movies, period. Mm, there's something to be said for that. And it, But it, the thing, here's the thing, though. That movie doesn't work without the preceding four movies. Yeah, like, I don't think that, like, when Tom said that uh, Rocky, th- this one is a standalone movie, I-, I would put Rocky Balboa above this one only if you count the its uh, predecessors. 
as a standalone movie, I would put Rocky above it because you need to know Rocky's history. Otherwise, the movie's just like, what am I watching? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But does that make it a worse film then? Because it can't stand alone. It can't well, no, that's like saying, film. like, if you watched Endgame, Endgame is an amazing film, but you need to almost watch at least some of the movies that lead up to it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like the if, moments aren't as impactful. Like, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. But that doesn't mean Endgame by itself is a bad movie. It's just if you don't watch them, you don't know. It, it doesn't make it as meaningful. Yeah, I I, I do. I understand. I, I, I see what you're saying there. Hmm. Danielle, Matt, do you agree? Disagree? Mm-hmm. I, He's like, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? You guys are stupid. <laughs> what? I was going to say, I, I don't know. I don't have really much of an opinion on where you choose to put a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the, I'm not going to argue with it. And then nostalgia and like, you know, can a film stand by itself if it, you know, has to oh. see like every other film in order to get what's going on in that film? This one, no. You can just definitely pick it up and, and carry on about your business. Hmm. Danielle, you still with us? I'm here. I'm thinking about it. I kind of understand what you're saying, though, Josh, about you need the other films to get to that Rocky Balboa film. Mm-hmm. Um, which I agree is a really good film. It's been a long time I've, since I've watched it, though. Yeah, I haven't marathoned the Rocky series in a while. But like I said, the most recent Rocky film, with accepting Rocky, is probably Rocky Three because, like I said, I'll just pick that one up to watch it. I'll say the one I've probably watched the most growing up was four but Uh, yeah yeah because i think they played it on tv all the time yes i do remember four basically living rent free uh on uh, tbs fourth of july height of the cold war of course you're gonna play that movie yeah and also we did find out tonight that it's the highest grossing one so it makes sense that four would be the one that gets played the most but i do like this one probably like i said probably first or second yeah yeah, it's like I wouldn't argue that point. I would argue that point if you said, you know, a certain Rocky one, which I shall not name. <laughs> which one? Not saying it. <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just just want to know. Just so that's it for tonight's one? show. <laughs> <laughs> but but do we want to segue on into our journey retrospective. Yeah, there? we can do that. I think so. Yeah, I've said everything I can say about this film. Now let's start saying some things about the films we've already said everything we could say about. So this has been our. I uh, let, let me let me go ahead. I want to take the reins here on this one, Tom. I want to say you did a good job picking this list. I don't think there was a really bad movie on this list. Like I would say the worst movie that we had seen. I didn't. I don't think it's like the worst movie I've ever seen would be The Untouchables. Yeah. That's the weakest one on the list, but even then, it's still not a bad it's, film. Yeah, the weakest, and this is talk coming from the guy who loves that movie. Mm. Um, I would say that The Untouchables was the weakest one, and the one that I thought I was going to hate the most is the one I enjoyed probably the most with the Last Picture Show. If Which I kind was of amazed rank, me when I heard you talking about it. But go ahead. Yeah, but okay. yeah, like honestly, if I was to rank the films that we watched, I would probably have to say Starman, Last Picture Show, Heat. Rocky, Untouchables. Oh, wait, no. I forgot Taxi Driver in there. I would probably put Taxi Driver at number four. You put Taxi Driver at number four. Not bad. Yeah. Um, say, I, I, I'm glad you guys have liked this journey because uh, I knew a lot of them were of the classic vein and that a lot of them you hadn't seen. So I was really excited that you all dug it. I'm curious... Um, I'm going to jump orders here and I'm going to ask our guests here of the episodes you've heard of us, uh, which ones have you enjoyed us talking about, whether it's just our insights into the movies or maybe we saw a movie you guys liked or didn't like and um, you were just interested in us talking about it. So I don't know about Matt because I don't know if he's been able to listen to the entire journey, but for me, I was really excited to hear you guys talk about Starman because it, it sounded like none of you had seen it. Mm-hmm. Nope. And that's one of those movies, again, that I was raised with. Like, we watched it all the time. So I was kind of intrigued to see how you guys would react to that, and I was really happy that you liked it. And the other one was Heat because I'm a big Michael Mann fan, and I was glad to hear you guys uh, – Enjoyed that one. Although I still think you need to watch Manhunter. Um. <laughs> I have seen it. 
I have just because seen it. I made you watch it. Um, <laughs> it's a movie. Oh, come on. <laughs> of all the films I've seen, it's definitely one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, what about you? I personally enjoy listening to you guys talk. Like all the different things that you, you say about different movies. It's, it's interesting to hear somebody else's opinion about a movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it's good to hear something because there's movies that I hate and that you guys thoroughly enjoy. And it's, it's interesting to hear, yeah, okay, maybe I should give this movie a second shot. Mm-hmm. If you say Tango and Cash, we're never speaking again. <laughs> no, but I was interested in the fact that you guys didn't like Flash Gordon. Flash. Uh, oh, oh god, I'd rather watch Rocky Five. <laughs> that bad, yeah. huh? At that least there's bad. a fight in that one. <laughs> yeah. We and it's got Stallone. I'll take a bad Stallone movie over anything, Flash Gordon. I'll watch over the top. Hell, I'll watch that porn that he was in before I'll watch Flash Gordon again. Oh, god. Go back to this journey. <laughs> <laughs> But Nigel, what about of the movies we've watched here? What have you thought of this journey? Oh, um, I'd have to say if I was, I don't know if I could rank them in any particular order. I have to agree with Josh, and this is coming from someone who loves the film, that um, The Untouchables was the weakest one we watched, but it still wasn't like that bad. Like it definitely wasn't like Art of War bad or Flash Gordon bad or something like that. So <laughs> like it, it was a weaker film compared to what else we saw, but it was pretty entertaining i still enjoy that film my uh, most surprising is starman that was the one i was like when we saw when we were going through the list and trying to pick lists a couple weeks ago i was like starman feels like a movie i'm just gonna have to get through because i'm not really one into romance movies Mm -hmm. you know but um it ended up being a really surprisingly good film yeah and uh, it's much more than that yeah, it's so mm-hmm. much more than a romance film, but that's kind of how it was built. So I've just never been interested in it. So um, I was really surprised by how much I really enjoyed Starman. And in fact, I enjoyed it so much. I watched it again last week on my own just so I could get more of the story on it. So mm. um, that was a good film. And I was really kind of happy that in this journey, we got to see young Jeff Bridges because I love Jeff Bridges. So uh, I was excited to see that. And uh, my next surprising film is The Last Picture Show. That's another one I thought I was going to hate that film. I thought I was going to hate it. And honestly, when the movie was over, I thought I did hate it. And then as we were talking about it, I did the reverse of The Natural, where I started to realize, like, hey, I kind of like this film. I, mm-hmm. Oh, I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I was the same way with that film. Like, I think when we stopped playing it, I was just indifferent to the film. I was like, ah, I don't think I like that. And I started thinking about it. And I think about halfway through Uran is when I changed my opinion of it. And then Tom's, when he went off and talked about it, it kind of solidified my opinion of it. Yeah. And then like I was, like I said, it was like me with the natural, like we got done watching the natural. I'm like, yeah, this is still a classic sports film. And then you and Tom started like picking on some of the things and I'm like replaying scenes in my head going, the movie sucked. <laughs> and then the reverse happened with the last picture show. I'm like, I didn't think I liked that movie. I don't really think I liked that movie. And then you guys start talking about it. And then I was like replaying those scenes in my head going, this movie was brilliant. <laughs> really mm-hmm. good so i really enjoyed this journey like i said i thought those two films i was really glad i watched them and i got i was glad i got to finally see heat i really enjoyed that film that I'm was a like good that one. movie mm-hmm. yeah i'm really glad you guys like that one um it still doesn't feel like a 90s film it really it's still it still feel it still holds up right yeah yeah yeah, yeah maybe because it influenced so many other movies in the de- years in the decade to come that every other film just felt like a heat film and it was ahead of its time yeah. maybe, but yeah, it does not feel like a nineties film. You guys need to watch the insider really that uh, I think you'll love it. If you haven't seen it already, that's the one with Russell Crowe and about Al cigarettes. Pacino, Russell oh. Crowe and um, Christopher Plummer. Oh, I don't mm-hmm. know this film after all. Tom, what'd you think about this journey? When I think about this journey, oh, yeah, I completely forgot. I was about to start asking you guys um, your favorite skits and um, such. Um, yeah, no, this... I got to get to you. Um, no, well, I again, don't forget. What... It's okay. Go ahead. And go, Tom. <laughs> I was just excited. I didn't mean that... to interrupt, Tom. It's okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. Like in these trying times, you need to purchase our vaginal massagers because we are an essential service providing all these lonely housewives in uh, these trying times 
Seriously though, how is he broken number five? Thirty four forty two. Dan makes it after I couldn't resist. I had to, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Oh my god. Can't resist either. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys liked the movies. All of them were I think the only one I expected um the well, one that I knew you guys were gonna like was well at least I thought was gonna be the safe film was Untouchables, and surprisingly enough it turned to be turned out to be the weakest one of this. Man, my nostalgia in that movie was different. But yeah, no, this was a great journey and just especially last picture show, just everyone being on board with that was amazing for me. When you said that you liked the film, Josh, I nearly fell out of my chair. I legitimately just did the Rocky fists in the air because I feel like I did it. I got him to agree with a movie that I really like. Oh, my God. So that's, yeah, Last Picture Show, number one, just for that reason. Honestly, though, um, this yeah this whole journey is hard to pick. Um, I, I don't even want to. Star Man was my surprise. I knew it was going to be a good film, but I was not expecting it to be a good film. And that, that was fantastic. So Taxi Driver, I'm glad I finally saw the movie. I probably will see it again because I need to unpack it more. Uh, yeah, that movie but, definitely needs unpacking. Yes. Uh, yeah, I but, haven't heard the episode yet, so I'm kind of interested to see what you guys thought of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little behind on it's. It's almost done. I just got to glue it together. So soon you'll you'll get to listen to it. Um, Heat, I knew I was going to like because I'd seen chunks of it. Um, some last picture show, like I said, I I love that film, and I'm glad you guys liked it too. So great. This is a win for me. Just watching great films that I knew were great or sus- ex- expected, suspected were great. It's becoming almost four in the morning now, so my brain is starting to uh, fade out. But I haven't been to bed yet. It's still yesterday <laughs> or today or it's still how, Friday. How was he broken five? It's <laughs> all <laughs> my brain can process now. Skits, though, for though I know we haven't released the taxi driver, so it is. Not yet um, a contender for uh, the skits, but what have we thought about the skits for this journey? And I'll let whoever has the most immediate thought start. I hate it um, all of them. I'm, I was going to say, I like the one that I was in. So I don't know about the rest of them, but the one that I was in was the best one. <laughs> Anything that you're in, Mac, instantly becomes the best thing. See, it's- I knew I was right. <laughs> and it's now recorded. It is now ah. on for posterity. People listen to this and will know. I'm I'm actually kind of frightened of what how, how this is going to turn out. <laughs> I honestly really like the taxi driver skit just because. Yeah, I thought that one was really funny. Like, really, really funny. I can't vote for it without hearing it, man. <laughs> I'm a it's, prostitute in that one. Yeah, he, no, yeah, like, you're a taxi like, driver. No, well, no, he's a prostitute. Like, a prostitute. It was written normal life anyway. It was written with him being a prostitute, but it was supposed to be ambiguous. But yeah, in that one, Tom's a prostitute. <laughs> it's the best. It's so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad we're going back to writing these things together. Josh off the chain. My characters, I just look at the script. I'm like, and now I'm a prostitute. Awesome. Somehow it doesn't surprise me that Josh wrote that one. <laughs> well, Tom pissed me off and I'm like, what can I do to his character? Okay, he's a prostitute and he loves White Claw. Done. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so funny. I love the through line that. of White Claw has been entertaining this this journey. Yes. Again, it just started with Josh with his White Claw. Me, pre- me wanting alcohol training. and prepping for a PT test. Like that's that's just a holdover from our last journey too. But uh, yeah, we I don't want to overstep too much of our air quotes commentary episode stuff. That uh, I hope you guys enjoyed as a surprise episode for this journey. Yeah, we were as surprised as you were that we had to release it. Yeah, we were like originally supposed to release it. The week after uh, we recorded this one, Tom's all like, yeah, I'm not going to get this out in time. And I'm all like, I amazingly enough was able to edit this commentary. I could do it this week. Yeah. Technical difficulties 
and recording schedules and then on top of more technical difficulties if i'd had like a time machine i could have but mm. no no not without making it the shittiest episode i have ever, ever edited so apologies to listeners um especially the new ones who came in thanks to podbean um, making us their featured podcast yeah. they showed up it's like oh this is an interesting show and they started with the clip show yeah <laughs> Well, when you can travel around the sun fast enough to travel back in time, then you could fix it. Yes, we can't yet. We can't. Mostly because people will die. But I do want to say that one of my favorite skits had to be our Starman skit because my son was a guest star. Oh, yeah, the Starman yes. skit was really funny, too. Yeah, I really like that one. Yes. Colin was great. He did a great job. And I also love the whole cut to where it's just like the callback to uh, one of our flying high, uh, our hero's journey skits with the bungee cord. On the skyscraper. Yes. And then, like, it just cuts to Josh's funeral. <laughs> yeah. Josh is like, like, if this is payback for what happened all those months ago, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Like, really sorry. That was great. And the ending, too, was like space Josh explodes. And it's like Colin's voice and uh, Josh's voice overlay. It's like, you know what? You guys are morons. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Keep the goddamn planet. <laughs> Have fun destroying yourselves. Yeah, that was good too. Yeah, I think I'd agree that Starman of our skits this season, not counting this one, which um honestly I think is going to be the best one. Called it. Get, not just. Wait, wait till you listen to the prostitute Tom skit though. That one's pretty fucking funny. I piss off Josh. I'm a, I become a prostitute. Don't piss off the writer. <laughs> Same thing. It's like don't piss off the editor. Basically, you get sound clips from like episode two. <laughs> Under the Tucson sun. <laughs> uh, but this is this has been a great journey, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Yep. Yep. Same. Same. But I've hit every note I can think of hitting, and a little bit more. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Danielle, Matt, um, any input or insights? How have you enjoyed being the guests on this episode? It's fun. I like it. Yeah, it's been a blast. Awesome. Well, we always love having guests on, and we're especially happy we could have you guys yeah. on. Yeah, been a long time coming on that one. Yeah. yeah. All those years of putting up with us in high school and college and everything else have finally paid off. I knew I read that trunk for a reason. You are guest stars on a featured podcast. <laughs> kind of I don't know if you're aware of this, but we're kind of a big deal now. So... <laughs> Uh, well, I think we've said all we can say about this movie and this journey, and it's near four in the morning, so I think, mm. take us home, Tom. Get us out of here. And that's it for tonight's show and this journey. As a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. I love saying our link. There are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays, most of the time, at 6 p.m., the majority of the time. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it as it helps us out. While you're doing it, especially you new uh, listeners who are coming in, let us know what you think. Give a review. Smash that heart and like that face and smiley that whatever they use to say that you like a podcast nowadays. But let the world know what you thought of this podcast. It will help us out and help other people find us. So get on it, please. And be sure to join our Discord channel as well. The link is in the episode's description. And also you can find it at discord.me forward slash fire pit. You'll get notifications of new episodes. Even better, you can engage in discussions with other fans of the show, like Danielle here, who's a guest starred tonight, and Rob and Tarek Thorne and uh, everyone else that's in there. And uh, you can take part in some of the discussions we have, which this week I'm sure is going to be a lively one on why is Rocky broke in number five. So <laughs> join the Discord. And uh, I'll start that topic up and we'll see. Uh, well, I'll probably just be talking to myself by Wednesday, but it's OK. Uh, hop on in. It's a fun time. Also, you can email us at Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Uh, that's uh, Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. 
at gmail.com. Mentioned back in the interspersal. If you want to send us a long message, a short message, a happy message, just whatever you want to say. Um, but also be sure to like our page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in the episode's description as well. And uh, I don't know if you guys heard or not, but we're a featured podcast at Podbean.com. So this podcast is actually sponsored by Podbean this episode. So Podbean is the uh, easiest way to create your own podcast. They've hosted us for the entire time we've been up, like a year and a half. So download the free Podbean podcast app. You can start, record, and publish your very own podcast literally in minutes. It provides everything you need to run your own podcast. You could record, publish episodes directly from your app on the phone. So check it out. They're awesome. Download their free Podbean app today. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N. So head on over to podbean.com you can even use we have a promo code they gave us a promo code for being a featured podcast podcast 21 for uh your first 30 days free of hosting so uh definitely check it out nice. very awesome so daniela matt any shout outs uh shout out to my wife danielle for letting us uh <laughs> you know signing me up for this bullshit <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have a discussion after this goes off the air <laughs> Shout out to you guys for, you know, inviting us over and letting us uh, hang out and do stuff with you guys. Well, nice. and, uh, Glad you had fun. Uh, shout out to the podcast guys for the pod beam guys for doing you guys right. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to Matt for putting up with me today. <laughs> <laughs> and um, shout out to my dad because, you know. I probably wouldn't have watched this movie without him when I was a kid. So cool. Yeah. Thank you. Danielle's dad. I'd like to shout out two of our followers. First, Shelby Brooke, one of our many hundred Facebook followers. And that guy, one of our latest Podbean followers. They both join hundreds, Facebook and Podbean respectively of new and loyal listeners who pop in on Podbean and on Facebook to see what we're up to, check out to see when we post new episodes, and listen to those episodes. And as well, go back and listen to past episodes, whether you just show up because you like the look of our logo or you're actually looking to just keep on keeping on with us. Thanks for listening. It's appreciated. And thank you for helping to keep the fire pits burning. And professionally, I would also like to shout out Odd. Audacity. It is the software I use every week to edit this podcast. It is free software, so we are not paying anything to use it, but they're not paying anything for us to say any good things about them. But so far, they've been pretty good to me. If you want to make a podcast of your own and maybe post it to Podbean, they will do right by you. And uh, I, for one, would like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Thanks always for listening and the feedback. Uh, she was super excited that we got featured this week. Uh, she was like really happy for us. A special shout out to another friend of the channel. I will shout out Rob tonight because by the time Rob listens to this episode, uh, he will no longer be a bachelor on high. He will be an old married man. So um, <laughs> congrats to Rob on the nuptials. And uh, I hope you have a long and happy life with your new wife. So and really just Rob's been one of our earliest supporters along with Danielle and Matt here. So just can't say enough good things about Rob for his support for the channel. So, or the show, yeah. I should say. So yeah, uh, Podbean may be our latest um, sponsor, but Rob was our first. Yeah. Yeah. Rob was our first sponsor and he was, like I said, he's always been real supportive. So just uh, really happy for him. And I will shout out Zencaster. Boy, do we have some technical difficulties tonight, but uh, Zencaster managed to keep all of it together. When we can't keep our own stuff together, Zencaster keeps it together. So yeah. Can't say enough good about Zencaster and uh, just like Audacity, we use it for free. We don't pay any money for it. They're not paying us anything to say nice things about them. But I mean, if you got a good product, uh, whether I pay no money or a hundred dollars for it, if it's good, I'm going to shout it out. So Zencaster is in the good pile. And I, uh, I have a shout out. That's kind of a long time coming. He, a uh, friend of mine, he, I shouted him out earlier, Edwards on the show. He actually left us a review, but he left it on his Facebook wall and, um, we always say we're going to read out reviews and I feel like that we missed drop the ball on not on shouting him out and reading his review on the air. So I really appreciated that. And I've been meaning to do that. And I remember tonight. So he said, 
Um, really unique movie podcast with a great cast of people behind the microphones. You're welcome. If you're interested in a podcast about movies, I highly recommend this one. They have a format like no other, and it's actually really refreshing to see how a show like this is done very well. Give it a shot. So he posted that for all of his friends to see. So Edwards, thank you um, for posting that so your 1,400 friends can read. Nice. Now tell yeah. your 1,400 friends to like and subscribe. and Hit that, yes. you know, up thumbs up button. And download some podcasts. Ooh. Yes, not our first one. No, please, for the love of God, Not new listeners one. who are starting with this episode, don't go back to the first one. No, um, you can go back and listen to our early episodes if you want, but they're really rough. Like we were, uh, it really was just three guys, one of them unemployed saying, let's do a podcast, <laughs> just kind of not really understanding what all that entailed. So we're using headset microphones and wireless mics for our phones or, you know, like Bluetooth headsets and laptop mics and audios just awful and there's a you know a moron that's chewing through half the damn and not chewing scenery like Tom does in our sketches i mean chewing because he won't stop eating because he's fat as hell so or rummaging through toy chests oh yeah rummaging through toy the chests other guys are trying to talk yeah and that we had no script to follow so it was all like you know who wants to do the intro who wants to do the rundown who wants to do all this so, I mean, if you want to watch a couple of guys fumble around in the dark <laughs> while they're trying to figure things out, give them a listen. But uh, just understand that those episodes are really rough. They are definitely – think of them like an unaired TV pilot. Like it's not quite where we want so to be So if you want to see – if you want to listen to a bunch of guys r- really roughing it and trying to figure out how to f- listen to a podcast – I hope you enjoyed the episode, but if you really want to hear it rough, check out our first ones. <laughs> it's like watching a Marvel film before they do all the CG. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wow. uh, professionally, I'd like to shout out uh, <laughs> Sync Lounge and Plex. They host our uh, movies for our viewing pleasure. So they're, again, free software that really helps uh, greases the wheels on our view or, uh, watch nights. Mm. Really greases the wheels on our watch nights. So... Thank you for providing that free software. Outstanding. Wowzers. We oh, have guys. So I'm trying to text my wife, but she's ghosting me. It's well, four in the morning. She, it's is she awake? 4 a.m. Yeah. Well, if you can't call your wife at four in the morning, then who are you going to call? P man. Well, in this life or the next, we shall figure it out. Am I right, guys? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. What are we talking about? I don't know. Well, just be sure. I to think d- this ending has been delayed enough. Yeah, it's been delayed enough. And uh, honestly, I'm going to be well into the great beyond by the time we get to it. But be sure to join us next week. Selection section episode coming up soon. Find out where we're going next. Where are we going next? Who knows? We know, but you'll find out next week. Tune in. <laughs> well, thank you. I've been Danielle. And I've been Matt. We appreciate the opportunity to come and join you guys. It's been great to have you. And... Until next time also, I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. Oh man, there is nothing like a cold drink after a long day of podcast recording. I know, right? Does anyone want a beer? No way, bro. I gotta watch my calories. How about a white claw? Radical. I'll take a mango. Watermelon for me. Totally raspberry guy right here. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is what it tastes like? Oh my god, I didn't know you are supposed to drink it! Oh my god, I just thought that you, you carried around the can, it was like a piece of jewelry. I didn't think people drank this shit! Oh, I think I actually oh, swallowed god. some. Oh, Jesus. Oh god, they should have a Nuremberg trial for the people who made this shit! Oh god. <laughs> I'm sucking from the teat of the gods. <sighs> Oh, it looks like the director is throwing a script at the Fire Pit podcast team. And berating them like grade schoolers. He's holding nothing back. Things aren't looking good for the Fire Pit right now. You know what? You can take your contract and you can shove it up your ass. Yeah, fuck you, bro. We don't need this shit. We don't need you. Looks like the White Claw rep is telling the team something. And they're not too happy about it. The team is 
petulant. What do you mean we have to pay it back? We don't need your money, man. We're a featured podcast. And good luck getting us to pay you back any of that advance anyways. We already spent it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? what? And what's up with the two commenters still here? They're just like following us around. Oh, I paid them. That that's where I paid the money on. Ah, uh, sweet, sweet, delicious money from Rubes. Oh. Why were you there when I was taking a dump earlier? Well, I gotta comment on something. And that's it for tonight's was- show. <laughs> <laughs> You can find us on Podbean.com. <laughs> Featured podcast. Thank you, Podbean. <laughs> Somebody found another white claw. <laughs> I don't know how you guys get through this. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs>